Brightspace has versatile tools that enable you to implement quizzes in your courses. These can be used for both feedback and evaluation. This, the first in a series of tutorials related to online quizzes, shows you how to use the Responda software to upload quiz items to any of your Brightspace shells. When thinking of preparing your online quizzes, it is a good idea to think of the process in four stages. First, conceptualize an overall design. Second, construct the individual items for your quiz. Third, assemble the quiz inside Brightspace. Fourth, adjust the quiz settings for deployment. I will start with the design. Let's assume that the sample is a typical midterm and that it's worth a total of 30 points. Whether or not it's worth 30% of the final grade is immaterial, as we can adjust that later using the gradebook. The first section will consist of 10 multiple choice questions, as well as one question that requires students to put items in order, and one item that requires students to match things. This will be worth 10 marks. We will shuffle the multiple choice items so that the students will get those in random order. The second section has four written response questions, each worth three points. Suppose also that we want to give the students some choice and that the third part of the exam has them choosing to answer two out of three questions. All three have a value of four points which means that if we use three separate questions, the exam will now be out of 34. This is a little problem because we want one of the questions left unanswered. While neither Respondus nor Brightspace Quiz Tool can handle this issue directly, there are workarounds, and one of them will be explained when we encounter it in the process. So, that's the first part done. Now, it's on to part two, where I construct the quiz items. Brightspace has an easy to use online editor that allows you to construct your test items, regardless of what type they are. If you are like me though, you would much rather write your test items in a more familiar environment, such as Microsoft Word. And that is where the respond to software comes in. If you download and install it from the CITL website or from the Faculty Resource Center Brightspace shell. It will allow you to upload test items you have written using your preferred writing tool. As you can see, I have already constructed the test items. In doing this, I followed a few simple rules so that Respondus would know what type of question it was exporting to Brightspace and so Make the necessary settings so that the items would work in the way intended. Let's now look at the multiple choice. Notice how they are written. I am using an ascending sequence of numbers starting with one and I am starting each of the four distractors with a letter again in sequence and followed by a period, a space and then the item. I could have used lower case letters and substituted a closed parenthesis for a period. In this instance, all of the items have four choices, labeled A to D, but you can use as many or as few as you like, as long as you use a letter sequence. The asterisk before one of the letters in each question indicates that this is the correct choice. And that is how multiple choice items are done. No special labeling is required. Just write your questions and number them in order, being careful to place the asterisk next to the correct one. If an image is required for the question, you simply paste it between the question and the first distractor. Likewise, images can be used for the distractors. This is one simple way of getting tables, equations, diagrams, and other graphical items into your tests without resorting to complicated formatting. If I have a table, for example, 
I take a screenshot of it, insert it into the document as an image, and then adjust the size so that the text is approximately the same as that for the rest of the question. Question 9 is an ordering type question. In this case, it's Piaget's development stages. The user will see the list of stages and will have to use numbers to put them in order. The format is similar to multiple choice in that it consists of the question stem followed by the choices to be ordered. The choices are tagged similar to the multiple choice distractors, that is, each starts with a letter followed by a period then a space and then finally the actual word or phrase. You must write these in the correct order and at test time Brightspace will present them in random order. Most importantly note the line containing type colon space ORD which is located above the item. This is vital in that it tells respondents what type of question it is importing. In this case it is an ordering type item. If you fail to include that Respondus will assume that it is a multiple choice item and will warn you because it will notice that there is no correct answer. One big takeaway here is that if your test item is anything but a multiple choice then it must be preceded by a line similar to the one shown. Let's look at another type of question. Question 10 is a matching question. The students are asked to match the concepts with the correct learning theory. Notice how the question is formatted. In this case there are three, but there can be as many as you want. Each part has a letter, followed by a dot, a space, and then the information for the item. In this case, because it's matching, the information is in two parts, the word or phrase and the thing to be matched with it. The two parts are separated by an equal sign. The spaces before and after the equal sign are optional, but they make it more readable, so you are advised to use them. Notice that the item is preceded by a line that says type colon space MT. In this case, the MT stands for matching type question. As before, if you forget to put that line in, the system will assume that you have a badly formatted multiple choice and it will warn you. The remaining items on the quiz are written response items. You can see the first of these, question 11, at the bottom of the screen. Notice that the question is preceded by type colon space E. Think of that as E for essay. And here are a few more of those items. Each is tagged separately by having that line, type, colon, space, E at the start. This one bears a further look. You may recall that the last section of the exam consisted of three questions and that the students were to choose any two. There's no way to do this directly, so this shows the workaround. Notice that all of the three choices were written as one question. This will show the three questions to the student and offer up one space for them to provide their answer. Now look at question 16. This simply states that the space below is for the second answer. It's not pretty, but it's simple and it will work. Now, let's turn away from composing the questions and move to uploading them to create a quiz in the Brightspace shell. So, here we are at the Respondus main screen. As a side note, if you have not already downloaded and installed Respondus on your PC, you can find it along with all of the instructions in the Faculty Resource Center in Brightspace. Notice also that this is a PC only application. It will not run on your Mac. Start by clicking Import Questions. 
This dialog pops up. There are several settings you have to make. First, we select the type of document if it's not plain text. It's most likely a Microsoft Word document, so pick whichever version you are using. If you used anything else, say Google Docs, for example, then download the file as RTF, rich text format, and choose that type. Now I need to find the file, so I click Browse. Select the file and click Open. Now you have to give the respondent's file a name. In this case, it's just a demo, but you might consider the long term and include not only the item name, but the approximate time it was used. I went with Sample Midterm Quiz, but something like Midterm 1, Fall 2020 might be better. Next, I click Preview to ensure that my file has no errors. Doing the preview is absolutely vital. No matter how hard you try, you will likely omit some small detail. Perhaps you forgot to put a star by the correct answer for one of your multiple choice items. Or maybe you forgot to label an essay type. When that happens, all you do is click Cancel at the top of the pop-up, go back and find the mistake, fix it, and then start the import over again. Be prepared to do this at least once. Once you get No Errors, you click Finish and Respondus saves the file and it's ready to be uploaded. Respondus then takes you to the Edit screen. Here you can make further alterations to your items if need be. Typically, you do not need to do this as that's why you used Word in the first place. Optionally, you can click Settings and do all of that before you upload to Brightspace. I typically don't do it that way, preferring instead to do all of that in Brightspace. But if you do, first click the Settings tab at the top. Then you click Restrictions. As you can see, from here you can set things such as when the test is open to students and for how long. If you click on Attempts, Submissions, there are further options including how many attempts the student is allowed. Typically this is one. And on the Layout tab you can choose how many questions are shown at a time. The final item, Random Sections, also allows you to shuffle questions if you wish. But as mentioned, I do all of that inside Brightspace and we'll show you how to do that in another tutorial. Let's upload the quiz. I click the Preview Publish tab. From this tab you can take one last look at your quiz and then upload it to Brightspace. I recommend that you do the preview just in case some little issue remains. So I click this link here and will quickly scroll through the items in the quiz one by one. Sometimes you will spot little formatting errors this way. Especially if your exam contains a lot of graphics or special characters. Because there were no errors found, I can now connect to Brightspace and upload the test. I first choose Publish and then click Publish Wizard link. This pop-up appears. Most often you will be publishing to a single course, but if you have multiple sections, you may use the Batch Publish option instead. The settings for MUN's Brightspace are pre-configured, so you do not need to make any changes. I click Next to continue. I click here for the drop-down to choose the course that this is to be uploaded to. 
and then I pick the course. Since this is a demo, I will choose my sandbox course shell. Notice that I have selected to create a new quiz in my course shell and have named it Sample Midterm Quiz. With that done, I click Next to continue. As soon as I click Next, Respondus connects to MUN's Brightspace server and uploads the quiz. A log of the progress is created in the open window. When Completed Successfully appears, you can click Finish. Let's see what this looks like in Brightspace. I'll go back to the page I left and refresh it. I first choose Assessment and then choose Quizzes. And there it is, along with the two that were there previously. I will click the link to open it. Scrolling down, I can see all of the items have been successfully uploaded. But there's still work to be done. I need to alter the values for the essay items. To subdivide the quiz into three sections, as shown at the beginning of this tutorial, and I also need to adjust the settings such as the date and the time for the quiz. The next two tutorials will show how to do this.